Mr. Epstein, back at it again with histogram. Do it for the gram. Let's talk about it. Histogram. Not the hardest problem. We know they're the connected bar graphs, but they're so easy, I could see us overlooking them, and I thought, mm, might be worth a quick refresher in a video. So unit two, the second unit in the book, is about representing data in pictures, drawing them. So you say, what type of pictures will I have to draw? I could see stem and leaf plot, it's pretty easy. I could see cumulative frequency graph, if they gave you a cumulative table, and that's like the one we had on the quiz. Finally, we have histogram. So let's take a look. The big idea of histogram is area of a rectangle. Do you know how to find area of a rectangle? Oh, you do? You know length times width? Then you can do these problems. The idea here is they want area, or the whole two-dimensional space of the graph, to represent the frequency value they give you in the table. Not all books teach it like this, but this is what they want here for ACE. So rather than area equals length times width, if area is frequency, our length and width will be the class width, which is just the width of the rectangle on the x-axis, this is what you'd expect, and this other category they're calling frequency density. And usually this is what we're solving for, because they give us frequency and class width in the table, so simply by dividing both sides by class width, we can find frequency density. Okay, look here at these two different tables. Can you see the difference? Take a look. Oh, you notice the difference. It's in how they list the height on the left side inequalities. On the right side, they just say 5 to 5, 2. 5, 3 to 5, 5. They focus on the integer values. It's a little vague. So these different ways they list the heights will show different ways we're going to label the x-axis. And here is how. Let's take a look at these actual histograms and we're going to start off looking at the x-axis. Okay, so here where they gave us inequalities 5 to 5, 2, 5, 2 to 5, 5, the x-axis is kind of just what you'd expect. We start here at 5 and we go to 5, 2 and then we go right to 5, 5. We start the rectangles right where they put the boundary points with the inequalities and everything is what you'd expect. Now over here, when we go 5 to 5, 2 and 5, 3 to 5, 5, they don't tell us about what to do with data points in between 5, 2 and 5, 3. Like what about 5.23 or 5.27? You have to decide and you'd probably make the right decision, you would just do normal rounding. As in if it's below 525, round it down into this category. And if it's above 525, round it up into this category. We'll show this here on our x-axis. Here's our first rectangle. Notice it starts at 4.95 and ends at 5.25. The next one, 5.25 to 5.55 and 5.55 to 5.95. So we have to scoot them out a little bit for the sake of rounding. Why do we do this? Because they don't give us inequalities in the table. Notice this makes the widths of the rectangle a little longer than you'd expect, the class width. This one, it's one, two, and two little halves, so this one has a total width of three. One, two, three, one, two, three, four for the final category. You need to know the class width for setting up these little area equals height times width formulas to find you the frequency density, FD. And you have to do this for every category, every column, every rectangle. These frequency densities that you solve for, you know, it's like the height, which will tell you how to label your y-axis. So here we see 20, 10, and 5, and over here, 13.3, 10, and 5. And notice the width of the rectangle we did is 3 because we had to scoot it out a little bit because of the rounding. 
we zoom out, we see our rectangles there, the area representing frequency density. Now notice that the categories, at least in this one on the left, are uneven values, as in the rectangles don't have the same width. In the book, they show an example on page 55 is what if they do have the same width, all the rectangles? Well then, a graph here where the area represents the frequency or a graph shown here where just the y-axis is the frequency, it basically gives you the same graph. But if the rectangles, as in if the class widths aren't the same, then the graph where you simply just graph the frequency and the graph where we're thinking of frequency as area and our y-axis is frequency density, then they'll look different. And I'm pretty sure they're going to want you to do frequency density on the ACE exam. So there is histogram. Hope you enjoyed it.